I'm going to work 8, 1, and 8, 2 together. They both introduce the idea of algebra, and I think they work very well together as opposed to two separate topics. So a couple of things. Algebra seems scary, but it's just a branch of math that uses symbols to represent unknown quantities. So we actually start algebraic thinking early on. In most areas, you'll have algebraic thinking as one of your sets of standards in, in first grade and every year past that. We saw it used in our missing add-ins where we might say three plus something equals five. That's algebra. We don't have the students sit there and subtract and solve the way we do. We ask them what number makes that a true sentence. And we could have them try three plus one. No, that doesn't work. Three plus two, that does work. And we use those um, symbols to represent unknowns, like that question mark, or sometimes we might see it as a box that they have to fill in really early on, well before you would ever be in an algebra class. The variable is that unknown quantity. Most of the time we represent that with a letter like X or N, but it really can be any symbol that means I don't know what goes there. And then equations are things that actually have equal signs. That's really what's going to separate 8-1 from 8-2. So 8-1 is going to be expressions. So if we look, expressions are not going to have an equal sign. So there's going to be no equal sign. When we get to equations, we're going to use that equal sign. So for these first ones, no equal sign. We're not solving. We're just writing out in symbols what that says in words. So two less than three times a number. Three times a number is pretty easy. That's three in, or if you want to write it three times in, that's pretty. That's fine either way. Subtraction is a really difficult one. Um, out of our basic operations because there's so many different ways that we can use it, like verbs that we can use to describe that. Some of them we use the exact way they're written, like the order they're written, and then other times like this one we don't. Two less actually means we would subtract two. So either one of these would be a correct answer. Half of a number plus seven couple ways to write half of a number. So we could write it like this. Half of usually means multiplication and number would be n. Or we could write it as n over two. Both of those are half of a number. And then plus seven. Pretty straightforward. We don't have to worry about the order as much with addition because we've seen that addition and multiplication are commutative. So seven plus n over two is the exact same thing. The order doesn't matter but it does for subtraction. So it makes subtracting a little bit tr more troublesome. Here's that other subtraction one. The difference between 15 and a number. That's just gonna be in the order that I have written. The difference between is the exact order that we have compared to up here when I said two less. Two less I do at the end of the problem. This problem four here goes back to the clothespin problem. Um, sorry, not the clothespin problem, the matchstick problem. Way back we did at the very beginning of the semester and oh, even further back, section one, two, this matchstick problem. It's the same thing we'll see in the homework. We get that matchstick problem again. So you can go back and look at that but um, set of your notes, but I wanted to give you a, a different example here. So I wanted to give you uh, something that would not be exactly the same since you already had a matchstick in your problem. So we're hanging out clothes to dry. And so on our shirt, we're gonna have, and I'm only adequate at drawing these. We're gonna have a clothes pin in the middle and on the two sides. To save shirts, to save clothes pins, when I go to put my second shirt on, I'm gonna use that same clothes pin again. So one shirt had three clothes pins. I'm reusing one clothes pin. So two shirts has five clothes pins. My shirts keep getting bigger. 
And I go to put the third shirt on, I've got this one overlapping, and I add two more. So I get seven clothespins. So it looks like each time I'm adding two clothespins. You could draw the picture out if you want to. I'm gonna show it without it, just in case you get like a big number you don't wanna do. So I would add two each time. So the next time would be a nine and then 11. So the fifth shirt, when I put the fifth shirt up there, there would be 11 clothespins. So we said that we were adding two each time. I'm gonna use this two down here for this last part. Just to remember when it says in shirts, that doesn't mean ninth. That means that in is gonna be my variable. We're using variables in this um, lesson. They're all gonna have unknowns in it. And this is what I'm gonna multiply by. Two times the number of shirts. This isn't my final answer. I'm gonna come off to the side. If I have two in, if I plug in one shirt, I would get out two, but that really needs to be three because we know the first shirt uses three clothespins. So to get two to turn into three, we added one. I'm gonna do that again. Let's just say we had two in. Let's say we plugged in for the second, or I'll do that for the third shirt. Two times three gives me six. I don't need it to be six. I know the third shirt needs to be seven. So to get six to turn into seven, we add one. So that's that missing piece to give me two in plus one. 